great to be back. Um, so as been said, I'm into type design, typography, and you know the similar stuff. Um, and uh, I think it's, it's, it's pretty exciting to be here on the stage because now, thanks to variable fonts, we are in the moment when the type business and type industry can shift into new directions. And this is something what's not happening that often in our so-called traditional discipline. Um, I'm teaching in Prague with my, with my colleague uh, Karel, you've seen actually yesterday, and Tomasz in the studio of type design and typography in Prague. Um, and we try to combine the various principles through comprehensive assignments. There's usually one major theme for us that contains a whole range of tasks and steps which students will encounter in their future prof profession. This past semester of academic year 2017 and 18 was dedicated to a new research. The ride on the current wave of technology was naturally very, very attractive for us. And as usual, in our studio, the assignment for the semester-long project was the same for all classes, BA, MA, and it understandably had more just than, just than technologi technological ambition. We had three goals. To find out whether the proclaimed variability was in reality just an advertising trap. Furthermore, we also wanted to find out whether our students would use these technological possibilities to make their ideas real. Uh, but above all, we were interested in finding out whether such work would be imprinted with a recognizable character as well as content. So to, pr to put it more precisely, whether they would end up in designing substantial shapes which would transform but for nothing. So in early, early September 2017, uh, we are about to start a semester, variable fonts the magical and wondrous technology we have, have, we have heard so much about. For many of our students, and me included, this would have been the very first attempt at designing typeface in variable font format, and we are really needed some help, so we naturally asked to invite Cliff Guru Erich, you have seen earlier today, to, for some help. <laughs> so the first, first step in our research it was a, so our main focus during research was to steer away from a, a usual examples of variable font usability and applications. We had to find a novel path for these real world, uh, world applications and develop an artistic representation of these new variable letter forms. As a means of simplifications for, um, and for our own purposes, students came up with six categories of variable type design that are based on our research. First category is a variable outline edge. The second is a variable stencil gap that can find its best use in fine tuning gap sizes in stencil, uh, stencil letter forms. Diacritic mark position variability can find its use in languages that have a problem when the title leading and certain compositions can create an overlap with diacritics. Variable coin settings, beneficial for settings on the degree of roundedness and its use for metal and coin manufacturing. Variable effects, um, a special level of effects that allows you to, f to, to finally adjust or animate when applied to video or website. And finally, our development, dynamic outline animation, experimental form that we came up during our research with the very metal format. The next step. The next step was to start designing the, our, our typefaces and further explore possibilities for white, for the variable functionality. Together, we made 12 variable fonts with 153 masters and with a ton of glyphs. And all of that we did in 98 days. Thank you. Um, as, as usual, our, our, all our fonts are made to current standards uh, with the full language support, open type features, and other features if needed, so that, because we really like finished fonts. Um, so to get, together we made a wide range of different, different typefaces which solve different issues or different, different effects, and I would like to show you them in, a, in a greater detail. 
The first typeface I'm going to show you is called Baseliner. And the Baseliner is designed by Shimon Matejka. In Czech language, we have to deal with diacritic accents basically all the time. So, you know, just for example, this poor guy, Shimon, has his two accents in his name. Baseliner is built on two axes. The first one leads us from condensed to extended, which resolves the, the perfect horizontal filling of lines. And the second axis gives us to, as possibility to finally set the diacritics. Um, that setting uh, type is, is good, you know, we know with tight light spacing and, you know, as you can actually see here in the posters. Divotvor, Divotvor is a typeface with two masters. The first one is simple serif, which could also work at small sizes. And the second master was inspired by ornamental typefaces, uh, which work in in kind of like inner and also outer space of the letters. Flextera. Flextera has a full masters, and this is, this is quite interesting, because you know, in, in its roots, when the, when the typeface came from, as the name says, it's based on a black letter style typeface, and, uh, and David choose the black letter because of its straightness and the sharp angles, which could be used in the variability of the typeface. So that, that logically allows you to, to deform weight and also, also height. And that can be quite handy and a, a perfect tool for, for all possible compositions with the flexibility. <sighs> Hairs. Uh, it's a typeface inspired by Wild West. And it contains 12 styles that can be mutually interpolated. The first master is slab serif, a horizontal instance transformed by the thickening horizontal parts. But it's also possible to enrich the characters with the three types of decoration in the middle part of the strokes. <sighs> Retroductor. It's best been reborn from ITC Eki lines by, by designer Akihiko Seki. And it has enormous 52 masters. An interesting fact about the retroductor, it, it, works, it, it works well in printed form as well, because not just in animation or motion design. Um, it's simply because it's drawn in every point of animation. So there's, there are basically no interpolation weak points. Minim. Minim is a typeface with four masters, made for perfect readability on every possible size. Um, so readability can be adjusted by ink traps, which can be enlarged or completely erased depending on the size of the typeface. Well, ink, ink trap basically is you know, spreading ink in print, but you know, it can somehow similarly work on the screen as well. So that's why we say that uh, Minim is LCD display friendly. Reda. Reda is a variable font created for use in templates, and it's inspired by metal plate sign on Seulen Road, a metalworking machine from 19th century in Germany. It's a family made of eight basic weights, and uh, it has three axes, which set stroke with character with, uh, with some little stencil, stencil values. So and logically, logically, the size of the stencil can be adjusted you know, to the technology you need that you are using. Another beauty is called Krabat. Krabat is inspired by horror films. Krabat contains six masters, which allows you to burn it <laughs> and melt it. <laughs> so, and anyway, there is also an uh, undecorated skeleton, uh, which can be used for like supplement in the text and outside, you know, outside of the titles. Soft hard grotesque. Soft hard grotesque is a full master narrow typeface suited for, for title use on posters, newspapers, and, and headlines. Um, and that's in the situation when, when rounding you know, possibility will be, will be useful. The interesting is that the UPM grid size had to be enlarged because of the rounding, so to make it perfect in, in, in every size. And in addition, the rounded, uh, the rounded and, and classic version um, they, they are prop proportionally uniform, so they can be freely combined.
The typeface in the pines came from proper research of Rustic number two typeface and all its redesigns, which were usually not very good or complete. So in the, in the, in the pines is a typeface with the full extended characters and six masters. Um, that gives you opportunity to grow and increase in thickness slant in both ways, depending on a forest wind, for instance. Cultivar. Cultivar is a built on, basic, on a very basic uh, sans serif skeleton. Um, and there's a 10 possible effects and you can do quite a lot with, it, with them. Um, and each of, them, each of them is different and so, and they could be fit for, for many, many combining and compositions and stuff. Um, beside the animation, besides the animation that also works well in print form. Heroica. Heroica is a typeface mainly for metal machine work, machinery, metal working machinery. Um, so you can you can pick from serif and sans and change the rounding. But mainly, <laughs> you can set the degree of roundedness and write it on any circle. How cool is that? Um, they could be useful for metal and coin makers, for example. Um, that's explaining of our design processes. And in our, school, in our school studio, there is a practice that near the end of the semester, we select a team of curators. Uh, one of the curators' main duties is to collect all concepts, data, and designs uh, in a printed catalog. We, don't, we describe typefaces in a greater detail, but not in just in a written form. Um, apart from Czech version, there's also an English version that we have prepared for those who might be interested. So feel free to ask a copy after my presentation. Um, one, of the last, one of the last steps in the project was, was designing installation and to come up, you know, architecture, conception, and layout. And, and we usually have a, less than two weeks for that. And uh, at the same time, this installation had to be, you know, showcased not only our typefaces, but also applying posters, you know, white rate me mediums, you know, also functionally variable, variable website, printed catalogs, and of course, video projection. In our final step, our final step in our uh, variable font adventure was animation. Animation, any, uh, animating variable fonts was quite challenging. Uh, it's because we lacked proper tools for animation. So it's a funny paradox that instead, you know, instead um, of like, speaking of using the latest futuristic te technology, we end up you know, using basic screen capture from a WebKit browser instead of using the latest animation software. So please, let me show you our, our video in motion, light up is in motion with sick music.